we'll take certain examples to see in rural areas how people uh, earn how they live what what are the sources of their income previous discussion we have looked at the uh, diversity we also explored how living in different regions has an effect on work people do uh, the kinds of plants trees crops and things that become important to them and here we will look at the different ways in which people earn their living in villages or rural areas and we will examine whether people have equal opportunities to earn a living or not and we will see the similarities in their life situation and the problem that they face so here is a picture which shows different people different doing uh, different work like someone making say building someone selling vegetables fishing agriculture there are certain things going on we'll take uh, the case study and then we'll try to look at what is happening here so kalpat to this is a village that's close to sea coast in tamil nadu people here do very kinds of work and as in other village here too there is non farm work like making baskets utensils pots bricks and bullock carts there are people who provide services like uh, blacksmiths nurses teachers washermen weavers barbers cycle repair mechanics and there are so many so there are also some shopkeepers and traders so in the main street who looks like a bazaar uh, the morning and uh, snack like vada bonda and uh, mysore pak in the evening it is available so near the tea shop in a corner lives a blacksmith family whose home serves as their workshop and next to their home is a cycle hire and repair shop so two families earn a living by washing clothes and there are certain people who go to the nearby town to work as construction workers and lorry drivers so the village is surrounded by low hills so paddy is the as you see here paddy is the main crop that is grown in the irrigated land most of the families earn a living through agriculture only so there are some coconut groves around cotton sugarcane and plantain these are also grown and there are mango orchards let us uh, meet some some people first of all in uh, kalpattu and see uh, by their lives what we can learn about farming from them and how they earn and what is how how the their life is this is a photo of transplanting pa paddy It is a quite a laborious job bag breaking you can say now tulsi tulsi says all of us here work on ramalingam's land he has 20 acres of paddy fields in kalpattu so even before i was married i used to work on paddy fields in my parental village so i work from 8:30 in the morning till 4:30 in the evening and uh, the kurthamma ramalingam's wife she supervises us so this is uh, one of the few times in the years that i find regular work now i'm transplanting the paddy when the plants have grown a bit so ram lingam will call us again for weeding and then finally once again for the harvesting so when i was young i could do this work with no difficulty this is tulsi saying but now as i grow older i find bending for long hours with my feet in water very painful ram lingam pays rupees 40 per day and this is a little less than what laborers get in my home village but i come here because i can depend on him to call me whenever there is a work so like others he does not go looking for cheaper labors from other villages now she uh, says about her women uh, her husband my husband raman is also a laborer he don't own any land during this time of the year he sprays pesticide so when there is no work on the farm he finds work outside either loading sand from the river or stone from the quarry nearby so this is sent by truck to be used in nearby towns to make houses so apart from working on the land i do all the task at the, at the home at home 
That is, I cook food for my family, clean the house and wash clothes. I go with other women to the nearby forest to collect firewood. And about one kilometer away, we have a village borewell from where I fetch water. My husband help in, uh, helps me in getting materials such as groceries from the house for the house. Our school going daughters are the joy of our lives. So last year, one of them fell ill and had to be taken to the hospital in town. And we had to sell our cow to pay back the money we borrowed from Lamalingam for her treatment. So this is the diagram uh, in which month of the year she earns money. So harvesting, season weeding, transplanting, preparing saplings. So these are the seasons or these are the months she get regular job. Otherwise, you know, uh, she has to sit at home. So what uh, Tulsi told us, as you just saw in Tulsi's story, poor families in rural areas often spend a lot of time every day collecting firewood, getting water and grazing their cattle. So even though they do not earn any money from these activities, they have to do them for the household. The family needs to spend time doing, during, doing this as they are not able to survive on the little money they earn. So nearly two-fifths of all rural families are agricultural laborers in our country, two-fifth. So there are some uh, who have small plots of land while others like Tulsi, they are landless. So not being able to earn money throughout the year forces people in many rural areas to travel long distances in search of work. And this uh, travel or migration take place during particular seasons. So let us uh, talk about uh, Shekhar, what his uh, story is. So we have to carry, Shekhar is saying, we have to carry this paddy to our house. My family has just finished harvesting our field. We don't own much land, only two acres. So we manage to do all work on our own. At times, especially during the harvest, I take the help of other small farmers and in turn help them harvest their field. So the trader gave me seeds and fertilizers as a loan. To pay back this loan, I have to sell my paddy to him at somewhat lower price than what I would get in the market. So he has sent his agent to remind farmers who have taken loans that they will sell the paddy only to him. So I will probably get uh, 60 bags of paddy from my field. Some of this I will sell to settle the loan. The rest will be used in my home. But whatever I have will last only eight months. So I need to earn some money. I work in Ramalingam's rich rice mill. Here I help him collect paddy from other farmers in the neighboring villages. We also have a hybrid cow whose milk we sell in the local milk cooperative. And this way we get a little extra money for our everyday needs. So here is uh, the example of where Shekhar would work. So on being on in debt, as we have seen, very often farmers like uh, Shekhar need to borrow money to purchase basic things like seeds, fertilizers and pesticides. And often they borrow this money from moneylenders. So if the seeds are not of good quality or pests attack their crop, there can be a major crop failure. So the crops uh, can also be ruined if the monsoon, if the monsoon does not bring enough rain. So when this happens, farmers sometimes are unable to pay back their loans and for a family to survive, they may even have to borrow more money. And soon the loan becomes so large that no matter what they earn, they are unable to repay. So this is when we can say they are caught in debt. And in recent years, uh, this has become a major cause of distress among farmers. So in some areas, this has also resulted in many farmers committing suicide. This is a picture of uh, Ramalingam's 20 acre land. This is a transplanted uh, paddy growing in a few land which Ramalingam own. A result of hard labor, which is performed by agriculture workers like Tulsi and others. So Ramalingam and uh, Kurothamma. In addition to land, we are talking about Ramalingam now. Ramalingam's family owns a rice mill and a shop selling seeds and pesticides. So for the rice mill, they used some of their own money and also borrowed from the government bank. They buy paddy from within the village and from surrounding villages. The rice that is produced in the mill is sold to the traders in nearby towns. This gives them 
a substantial or you can say good income. Terrace farming in Nagaland. See, the hill or the, the, for the land in the mountain is something like this. Some. So what they do, they do the farming in steps. So they make this like, the pattern is like this. So ultimately, this is called step farming. Here they grow the crop and they cover it so that water should not go down or flow down. So terrace farming in uh, Nagaland, there is a village called Chizami, which is in fake district in Nagaland. So the people of this village belong to the Chakshag community. This is a kind of farming which we are witnessing. They do the terrace cultivation. This means that the land on a hill slope is made into flat plots and curve, carved into steps. The sides of each plot are raised in order to retain water. So this allow water to stand in the field, which is best for rice cultivation. So the people of Chizami have their own individual fields, but they also work collectively in each other's field. They form groups of six and eight and take an entire mountainside to clean the weeds on it. So each group eats together once they, their work for the day is over. And this goes for several days until the work is completed. So this is terrace farming in Nagaland. So now we will talk about the agriculture laborers and farmers in India. In Kalapattu village, there are agriculture laborers as we saw Tulsi and small farmers as we talked about Shekhar and few big farmers also like Ramalingam. So in India, nearly two out of every five rural families are agriculture laborer families. And all of them depend on the work they do on other people's feed to earn a living. So many of them are landless and others may own very small plots of land. So in the case of small farmers like Shekhar, their land is barely enough to meet their needs. So in India, 80% of farmers belong to this group. Only 20% of India's farmers are like Ramalingam. So these large farmers cultivate most of the land in the villages. So a large part of their produce is sold in the market. So many of them have started other businesses like uh, shop, money lending, trading, small factories. So we have looked at farming in Kalapattu. So apart from farming, because Tamil Nadu has, you know, a large seashore, apart from farming, many people in rural areas depend upon collection from the forest, animal husbandry, dairy produce and fishing. Uh, for instance, uh, in some villages in central in, uh, India, both farming and collection of, of from the forest are important source of livelihood. Collecting mahua, tendu, leaves, honey uh, to be sold to the traders is an important source of additional income. And similarly, selling milk to the village cooperative society or taking milk to the nearby town uh, may be the main source of livelihood for some families. So in the coastal areas, we find fishing villages. Uh, let us see about the lives of fishing family by reading about the about Aruna and uh, Parivelan who live in Pudupet. Pudupet, a village which is close to Kalapattu. First, you have to witness this, how this woman is selling fish in the, this is fisherman, fisherwoman selling the catch at the local market. This is how fishing is going on, a simple picture depicting many things. So Aruna and Parivelan, not very far, far from Kalapattu is the village of Pudupet. So people have earned their living by fishing. So their houses are close to the sea and one finds uh, rows of catamarans and nets lying around. At about 7 o'clock in the morning, there is a lot of activity on the beach. This is the time when the catamarans return with their catch and women gather to buy and sell fish. So my husband, this is Aruna saying, my husband Parivelan, my brother and my brother-in-law came in late today. I was very worried. They go to the go to the sea together in our catamaran and they said they were caught in a storm so i have kept aside some fish uh, for the family and i will auction the rest the money i get from the auction will be divided into four shares 
one each for each person who went fishing and the fourth one is for the equipment since we own the catamaran engine and nets we get that share too so we have taken a loan from a bank and purchased an engine which is fixed on the catamaran now they can go far into the sea so that they can catch a better they can get a better catch so women who buy fish here will carry it in the baskets to to be sold in nearby village then there are others like traders who buy for the sh uh, for the ships shops in the town i will only finish this auction by noon so in the evening my husband and my our relative will untangle and repair our nets early uh, tomorrow morning around 2 am they will set up the sea again every year for at least about 4 months during monsoon they cannot go to the sea because uh, this is when the sea in the sea fish breed this is their breeding season and during these months we, we survive by borrowing from the trader and because of this later we are forced to sell the fish to that trader and cannot do our auction so those lean months are the most difficult and last year aruna suffered a lot because of the tsunami also so rural livelihood people in rural areas and they are living in various ways as we saw here with certain examples some work on farms while other earn their living on non farm activities so working on farms involves operation like uh, preparing the land sowing weeding and uh, harvesting of crops so we depend on nature of the growth of these crops therefore life revolves around certain seasons people are busy during sowing and harvesting and less so at other times so rural people in different regions of the country grow different crops however we do find some similarity in their life situation and in the problem what they face so how people are able to survive or earn will depend upon the land that they cultivate many depend on these lands for work as lab laborers most farmers grow crops both for their own requirements and also to sell in the market some have to sell the traders from whom they have borrowed money who have lent them money and for their survival many families need to borrow money for their work or when no work is available so there are some families in rural areas which thrive on large acres of land business and other activities however some small farmers agriculture laborers fishing families craft persons in the village do not find enough work to keep them employed throughout the year 